We actually opened Uti Quad Country on January the 10th and we uh, probably have the record of liquidating our assets at noon on the same day. <laughs> we did, we opened on that day. Um, I have engineering and, and surveying background and um, on that day I was at a meeting way south of Alderley Street and after about 15 minutes of that rain intensity I said I might have to go and they said oh why's that and I said because these creeks aren't going to handle this and I get into the shop here and my son says oh dad I think it's going to come in the workshop I said forget the workshop I said get these quads going oh no dad no I won't come up in here I said no get these quads going so um it was amazing, all these starter motors turning over, but no quads were starting. So I had to call a, a stop, stop, stop. This is the procedure. Key on, choke full on, no throttle. Boom, one started and then another started. By the time we got the first quad to go, this was well under. That's up to the forklift and we're in six inches of water on this floor that's how fast it come through because it was the wall that it's all hitting this junction at the same time so we were riding out through two foot of water at the end and we rode up to the high tide mark and we conducted business as usual in the middle of Ruthven Street <laughs> it's amazing when something like this happens there's certain people you wouldn't believe soar like eagles and there's others that go lower because the thieves were worse we didn't have volunteers coming in as such, but there was a lot of goodwill amongst our friends, obviously, but it's an extremely depressing thing to come back from three weeks of flood relief work myself and find the floors half demolished and the walls are half out, and I'm surrounded by this, and I'm telling you, um, a depression is descending like a huge fog. We conducted our own rebuild, but we had to put new floors down and wall sheeting and things like that but we anyway it, it that was very uplifting a good insurance company and a very aggressive broker really lifted me straight back up because suddenly oh there's my avenue so we could rebuild I've had blood blisters on the thumb <laughs> hammering in floorboards but I enjoy doing it too because you're actually getting down and, and rebuilding I was very disappointed about police because I got threatened to be arrested six times during that whole thing. Okay. One of the things that struck me vividly, and it still does, is next door of Mr. Rental is a, a panorama shot from the opposite veranda of this area, and these two shops were like an island, an, an island in a lake. We had a, a little car stuck on top of a parking meter out front here, so largely the water level was about the top of the parking meters. Um, to me, that's the most profound visual, and if, if we were going to have a mosaic on this wall, I would love to see that captured on the wall at the actual level, which is like a metre up the wall from the footpath, and, and people could come along and say, like, wow, because I've got, a, I've got topographical mapping on my GPS and I can do elevations. You know, we're here at the junction <coughs> excuse me, of the two creeks, so this is East Creek here, here's Picnic Point, our entire catchment trying to squeeze out through Griffith Street down here is 60 square kilometres. Um, we have a big problem in this area because we're the northern end of an extinct volcanic crater, which means it's largely a basin. It's a great place for a city because it retains moisture and our gardens are great and everything, but when something like January 10th happened, West Creek comes down here and East Creek comes down here and even Mount Lofty drains south before it joins East Creek. So they all hit about the same time down here. Unfortunately, East Creek has been changed by development to come into West Creek at worse than 90 degrees and it actually hits the raised railway land and pushes back up. So the, the water that was coming up to the coffee club is actually coming from here. You don't understand how much subconsciously you take in these disasters. People have to bring in a element of normality. So one of the Sundays I knocked off early, went home and mowed my lawns. <laughs> Couldn't believe what it did for me. <laughs>